What we're going to look at this morning is some classic organic mechanistic chemistry and we're going to use the example of codeine to do it. Codeine of course the important pain-killing pharmaceutical drug which you can buy over the counter at the pharmacy. We're going to think about how codeine is made. Now it looks like an incredibly complex structure of course um, but really, in terms of the pharmaceutical preparation of codeine, there's only one thing that you need to do. You need to take morphine, which is extracted from opium poppies, and you need to turn it into codeine. So if we think about the structure of morphine, we will realise that instead of having an ether at this position, it has an alcohol. So what we really need to think about is the reactivity of morphine and how that position can be made to react. If we think about morphine and we want to think which are the most reactive nucleophilic sites on morphine. A nucleophile is a species that wants to donate its electrons. In terms of curly arrows, a nucleophile is where the electron movement starts. And if we're looking for the best nucleophile in a compound, the first thing that we would normally look for is a negative charge. The second thing we would look for is a lone pair of electrons. And the third thing we would look for is some sort of multiple bond. Each of these species is electron rich and capable of donating a pair of electrons. If we look at the structure of morphine here, we can see there are no negative charges. Thinking about the lone pairs, however, there are a few possibilities. We have lone pairs on the nitrogen, lone pairs on each of the oxygens. And so we need to think about which is going to be more reactive, a lone pair on an oxygen atom or a lone pair on a nitrogen atom. Now, this is the first place where people go wrong with this kind of problem. Because there's a tendency to think, oh, oxygen is more electronegative, so these lone pairs are going to be more reactive, they're going to be more negative. That is the wrong way of thinking about this problem. Because these oxygen atoms are more electronegative than nitrogen, they hold on to those lone pairs better. Whereas nitrogen, a less electronegative atom, is better able to give its lone pair away. So if we look at the structure of morphine itself, this nitrogen over here is the most reactive nucleophilic site. If we reacted this compound with an electrophile, and we call that electrophile E+, then the first thing that would happen would be the nitrogen would react with the electrophile. And actually, if we want to turn morphine into codeine, this doesn't help us. Because we want to react this oxygen over here, not this nitrogen over here. So how can we go about enhancing the reactivity of these oxygen lone pairs? Well, we know, in terms of nucleophilicity, that if we had a negative charge, it would be more nucleophilic than a lone pair. So somehow we need to turn this oxygen atom into having a full negative charge. And if we think about this, we have a hydrogen attached to the oxygen here and here, and these hydrogens will be somewhat acidic. They will be delta positive because they're attached to a delta negative oxygen. So if we treated morphine with an alkali base, we could remove these protons. If we remove these protons, what that would give us is negative charges on the oxygens. At this point, these negative charges would be more nucleophilic than this lone pair on the nitrogen, and these would be the reactive sites. Now, the next issue we need to think about is, in codeine, only this position has reacted and not this position. Have a think, why is this better able to react? Well, the answer lies in the deprotonation step. Although these OHs might look the same, they're not the same. 
This alcohol is attached to a benzene ring. It is a phenol group. This alcohol is attached to a cyclohexene ring. That's a different functional group. One of those protons is going to be easier to remove than the other because of the group the alcohol is attached to. And if we think about the phenol and we deprotonate a phenol and we put a negative charge onto the oxygen, this negative charge is resonance delocalized around the ring. So this is somewhat stabilized. If we deprotonate this oxygen and give it a negative charge, there is no resonance stabilization because this is not an aromatic ring. And so, in fact, the only effect is a plus I inductive effect pushing electrons towards the negative charge and destabilizing it. So, this alcohol, the phenol, will deprotonate first. And this alcohol on the cyclohexene group will deprotonate second. So if we use one equivalent of alkali, then this is the species that we will make, where we've deprotonated at this position. So we now have got the correct reactive position for turning morphine into codeine. The only question that remains is how do we attach a CH3 group to this oxygen atom. So we want to make a methyl ether, CH3. Somehow we need to make electrons flow from this negative charge towards the carbon. If we're going to achieve that, the carbon here has to have a delta positive charge. That means we need some sort of X group here and the electron density will then flow towards the positive charge and displace X, where X is an electronegative atom. This is a nucleophilic substitution type reaction. As I've drawn it, this is an SN2 mechanism, where both reagents are in the rate determining step and the arrows flow through like this. So what should our choice of X group be? Well, it would be tempting to suggest that the optimum group here would be fluorine. Fluorine is really electronegative, so it really polarizes this bond very strongly. So you can imagine that this carbon is very delta positive and it will make the attack of this anion very effective. However, the carbon-fluorine bond is pretty strong. It's a short bond. That means it's difficult to break this bond. So in actual fact, fluorine is not the optimum leaving group to put on this kind of compound. And that's a slightly counterintuitive result. We need to think of something better as a leaving group, which is still capable of polarizing the carbon so that the nucleophile can attack. So instead of using a fluoride here, it's better to use an iodide group. Although that makes it less delta minus and less delta plus, which will slightly slow down the attack of the nucleophile, this bond is longer, weaker and much more easily broken. And in this way, the reaction is enhanced. This is a so-called leaving group effect. And this transformation will turn morphine into codeine by forming a bond between the oxygen and the methyl group. So overall, morphine is turned into codeine by activating the phenol group specifically because it's more acidic, because of the resonance mesomeric effect of the benzene ring. By deprotonating the phenol, it becomes the most nucleophilic site, which is then able to react with an electrophile on which we choose a good leaving group with a weak bond so we can easily form the ether that we want. Simple organic reactions and mechanisms applied to a complicated molecule to show that even those A-level and first-year principles of organic chemistry still apply even when the chemistry gets complex.